Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Yes, welcome back, one and all. Thank you guys for being part of the family. And before we get going, I'll just say, if anybody wants to subscribe, go right ahead and make sure you click the click the little bell, too, so you get the notifications. Hopefully, as always, there's always uh, cases where people get unsubscribed, as we know. Yes, so if you don't mind double-checking that, that's great. That's awesome. And so we see from the Midwest to the Northeast, millions of people are bracing for a major Nor'easter that's going to begin on Saturday and end on Tuesday. And uh, we did talk to some family members in uh, PA, and yeah, it's, it's starting. They say this one could be the biggest in five years. Oh my gosh, this is, we're going to watch this one. So the potential is getting more real every day. Areas from Iowa all the way to Maine need to be ready for an upcoming major snowstorm with some totals reaching over 18 inches. The storm begins Saturday as an icy mix with snow from Minneapolis to Des Moines. And then temperatures below freezing, so roads are going to be slick. Drivers should be especially careful. The snow will begin in Chicago Saturday and become heavier. And when we when we look at the map, it looks like it's going to be a big one here, guys. You can see up by the Poconos, 16 to 18 inches, the possibility all the way through the mid area here, 12 to 16, uh, and through Wilmington, Philadelphia, 8 to 12, and then getting into lower totals farther south you go. Yeah, so hopefully everybody's already stocked up. Yep, so New York City, Philadelphia, good chance for about 10 inches. Yep, brace yourself. And we see here, by the way, this storm, because this is a massive, massive storm, it's going to bring 60-foot storm waves. That's pretty huge. I mean, we've seen this occasionally, um, and it's it's getting more often w what we've seen. In the Pacific Northwest, of course, we have that Pineapple Express type of thing going with one storm after another, and it was really odd because we saw record low and record high millibar readings it just, you know, like about a month ago. Pretty crazy. It, it's really getting like that. So interesting here. They say the world is wobbling big time again. It It, it is the extremes. They're, as we've been saying, they're mm -hmm. getting more and more extreme. And, and the rapid intensification uh, is, is something for the record books. But we've seen that with, well, Hurricane Michael hitting the you know, Florida Panhandle, for instance. That was like one of the first ones that... It just went from tropical storm to really category five, like yeah. blink of an eye. I know a blink of an eye sometimes, but this feels like a, a kind of like a slow boil, but still things are intensifying. They are. They are. And talking about wiggling and wobbling, Mars is wiggling and wobbling as it spins. And they say astronomers have no idea why. So why is Mars not rotating on a straight axis? The red planet is wiggling and wobbling as it spins do they really have no idea why? <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I mean, the Earth does, as we know, it has that wobble. We have the precession of the equinoxes. Uh, we're also at 23 and a half degree tilt. Uh, we've seen strange reactions to the incoming energy in the outer planets, like Uranus and Neptune. And, you know, we're waiting for that energy wave to come and hit us at some point in time. Yeah, eventually it will hit us, and it'll be a really big thing for evolution. So the poles of Mars are wandering ever so slightly away from the planet's axis of rotation, moving about four inches off-center every 200 days or so. And that makes Mars only the second planet in the universe to exhibit this phenomenon with Earth being the first that we know about and that they let us know about. So that gets me wondering, you know, we have the asteroid belt, right? And the legends of Tiamat and, you know, this huge cataclysm that perhaps wiped out a planet there and created that asteroid belt. Is that when, you know, Mars got its wobble and Earth got its 23 and a half degrees? I don't know. It'd be fun to meditate on that. That could be something to remote view yes. um, for sure. And it is curious that we see this mineral often found on Mars discovered deep in Antarctic ice. So this mineral is called jarosite. And the only place that they really find it on Earth is in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. 
and the the other place that they know and it's it's rarely found on earth rarely the only other place is mars interestingly enough so that gets me wondering too was is that the product of some sort of impact and maybe w- the way that the earth was facing mars at that time material uh got knocked and came into our atmosphere and perhaps, you know, Antarctica was the area that was facing it. Or, hmm, as we know, there's a whole lot of rumors of these quote-unquote pre-Adamites. Like if we listen to Corey Good, uh, give us info on that. These pre-Adamites that, you know, had bases and landed on Mars, these ones with the long conical heads, uh, they came from Mars. And that's where their base was. Uh, were they bringing some of that with them? Was there something else? Did did like one of their ships crash, explode? Was there a war going on? I mean, it brings up a whole bunch of questions. I know. I'm leaning toward it was trans. It was transferred here through um, ships and other means. That's what I'm really strongly feeling. It very well could be, you know, because I do remember running into reading about certain other things like bacteria and stuff that are found uh, there and then again towards Mars. I'll have to dig into that again. I I don't remember the exact articles or where I got it from. It might have been live science, but interesting stuff. Our history is definitely washed over and, uh, you know, I think it it may come out. It may come out. There's also a buzz and... um, I think we saw it. <coughs> I think we saw it on Twitter. Uh, third phase of the moon, you know, was, was talking about some footage, and that's a YouTube channel for you guys that don't know. Third phase of the moon, um, some footage that came out that supposedly shows NASA like fifty plus years ago um, sending people to Mars, and in and there's people analyzing it, and they say it it looks legitimate um but we did hear also there's there's you know some transmissions going on vocally uh that people think might have been added after the fact to try to discredit it Mm -hmm. right well it wouldn't surprise me at all being the way they lay out information here to have something like that already in place and going on i mean to me if i found out like today that that was truly the case I, i wouldn't be shocked at all when you think about it, why did our space program all of a sudden just stop? Just stop, you know, landing men on, on the moon, supposedly, right? Some people don't believe that happened. Uh, and others believe that, well, you know, the, the, the NAZIs were there decades before we were, you know, because they, they had developed their saucers, which we do have declassified documentation on. That was a real, real program. And we've talked about Admiral Byrd many, many times. So what is, you know, the reality? If if you talk to, uh, again, like Corey Good and sources like that, and it's not just him because there's so many others that have come out. Uh, people will bring up Phil Schneider, you know, who, you know, came to a not so pleasant end. And he was talking all about the secret bases, the interactions with ETs, the Dulce event as well. Uh, here in New Mexico, and, you know, all these different events that we've had, you know, we had the the flyover of D.C. with the saucers, we had the Battle of L.A., we've had Roswell, we've had a million different sightings, and we, you know, we know there's declassified documentation of, well, you know, um, free energy machines as well, which you know more than likely came from an extraterrestrial source. Well, when I look at these things, I feel that all of them, and I mean all of them, there is definitely going to be some kind of a cover story for for everything, you know, because they have to shift and move our reality to keep what they do covered up. Exactly, and and you and I, we've had you know direct contact with these grays, and you know the tall gray more than the little grays. Although my kids were terrorized by the little grays growing up, um, 
it's something they watch certain families, they watch certain bloodlines. You know, again, there's all those genetic experiments. So for us, it's not conjecture. We, we know mm-hmm. because we've experienced firsthand that I've shared that I woke up December of 2017 uh, after the channel had been up for about four months and the first channel, which they demonized and, and they won't review. They just refused to review it. Um, and saw a tall gray. I mean, I felt something energetically go in my lower abdomen just below my belly button, which is where your lower dantian, your lower reservoir of physical life force energy is kept, uh, the hara point in, in Jap- Japanese. And I saw him clear as day. And he looked immediately away from me, and he started to seem to meditate, so to speak, and then he slowly went from being a solid being to an energy pattern and gone. But I watched him for, I'd say, about a minute and a half while he was doing it. And I could tell he was freaking out because he didn't think that I should be able to see him or I shouldn't be able to wake up. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, they do have these technologies where they can phase themselves in and out of the 3D to work on certain things. And then when they're done, they phase themselves out. And he clearly realized he, he had made a mistake. Yeah, and so I'm not sure if it was the exact same one, but there's been one assigned to us. We've sensed and seen him in the Nevada desert when we were out on our hikes very close to uh, Nellis Air Force Base and, you know, Area 51, that whole area. Um, and so, you know, we know they've, they're they attached and they watch certain people. And we went live once. We were attempting to go live once, and they started to interfere with us going live. And so I could sense him. I asked you, is the gray here? And you, and you said, yeah, he's right next to the camper, uh, right in the middle. So I you know, ran out real quickly and got to where he is. I couldn't see him, but th- he was there basically. You could look at it on a slightly higher vibrational level. And so I just focused and got into his energy field, and that caused him a lot of distress, and he took off. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can affect the way they affect us. We do have techniques and things that we can do to push back, but most of it involves building up our own energy body. Yes. And that's why we recommend Qigong and mantras and meditation. Because, again, this is a spiritual battle. And what does that mean? Well, it means it's a multi dimensional battle. It's not just in the 3D, it goes on, you know, in other uh, densities besides that. And here we see the Atlantic Ocean mysteriously growing bigger every year, pushing the Americas away from Europe and Africa. I wouldn't say that was really mysterious. This is the Mid-Atlantic uh, Ridge here, which is growing. So at some point in time in the future, if all things go along as they're going now without any other major impacting events, the Atlantic will actually be bigger than the Pacific, as the Pacific is shrinking and the Atlantic is expanding and getting bigger. So it's balancing in its own different way change just the one thing is that's constant is everything is always changing so we have a loud bang uh across tam side on sunday night caught on camera some describing it as a sonic boom and so you know this is in the uk we've seen so many of these we've heard so many of these usually you know you get a flash boom and we see a blazing asteroid streaks through the sky over Granada, 83,000 kilometers per hour. Uh, an asteroid, huh? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and we there's so many of these. This is every single day. It's just a matter of, you know, we uh, pick and choose a few, a few of them here and there. But that's, you know, we're either in a really active area. And it might be both. Or a lot of these are not actually asteroids. There are other things, perhaps, as well. It's definitely a little of both. Then we have these amazing fall streak clouds over Alabama and Georgia, prompting UFO sighting buzz. Motherships are coming, guys. Motherships. And uh, Joffrey, one of our family members in Alabama, was uh, sent me a couple of photos of what looks to be like some sort of interference pattern wavelength pattern as if there's some sort of energy being put up into the clouds because you can see these you know strange patterns up in there and i found this curious too because you know while we had that happen we also in georgia get an explosive boom noise in parts of northwest georgia are they related is there something going on between the clouds 
and this boom. And what was this? Is is this, you know, those hole punch clouds because of things coming in or going out or, you know, ships on a different vibrational frequency? Right. Well, what the guides are telling me is it creates a kind of vacuum when they do go in and out. And that's what your boom is. Mm, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Take it to warp speed, Scotty. <laughs> yes. So, guys, thank you so much for your support and Ko-Fi and Patreon. As always, be prepared for whatever comes. Keep sending out the positive prayers and vibrations as we, you know, delve deeper and deeper into all these mysteries. As uh, as we have said, this is the apocalypse, which really means the great unveiling. And so, you know, disclosures underway, and so many things are are all the puzzle pieces are starting to fit a little bit more into place. I think for many. Yep, and this is just the beginning. God bless and namaste. Namaste.